hi everyone welcome back to my channel it is my favorite time of the month and that is to share all of the things that i have been making um see this is for the month of april and it's actually been quite busy work has picked up a lot so i haven't really had as much time for sewing but i still managed to get four pieces done i think two that i'm really proud of and two that i'm sort of meh on what I'm wearing is the first piece I've made, and this is one of my meh pieces. I used a um, Leanne Marshall pattern from Simplicity. I have made this previously in sort of like a matte print fabric. This time I used another one of my saris that I picked up for from Vintage and You, and you can find all these links down below in the description. Also, I altered the pattern a little bit. I left out the... Um, the collar piece just because when I put it on I thought it it looked very 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 busy with all of this other stuff that was going on so I just made a little bias cut um, piece instead and did and wrap that around into the back so it just is a much more cleaner halter line um, if anyone's thinking of making this pattern I would say that it tends to run a little bit small I found this last time I made it as well. So I would suggest going up a size from what you normally do in a big four pattern. I made this pattern first a while ago and it was before I learned about sway back adjustments. And so, and I didn't realize that. So I made it and I think it's a little bit too long in back. And I also think it's a little too long all the way around, but this is the dress that I made for the Easter Spring Sew so Along 2017. Um, originally, I was not planning on participating, but I found this fabric at Joann's about a week before you had to have your dresses posted, and I just wanted to buy it. It is not something that I normally would buy. Uh, orange is not a color that I wear super often, but I just thought it looked really cute and it was perfect for the Sew so Along. Originally, I was planning on doing like a 60s mod style ship's dress, but I didn't think it would be particularly flattering on me. So I ended up going with a fit and flare style instead, of course. Um, I used a Cynthia Raleigh pattern from Simplicity. I used the bodice that is on the model and then a longer skirt from another view. And I just did that because I prefer my skirts to hit me a little bit longer. This one comes just shy of the knee, and I'm really glad that I ended up using a longer skirt. Uh, while I'm talking about the skirt, it has a really interesting um, pleating detail that like all comes towards the center. I think it's really cute and flattering and Tony really loved it. It makes the skirt seem really full and twirly, but I was able to cut everything out of like 3.3 yards of fabric. So um, the fact that I could get a nice full twirly skirt out of that little amount of fabric, I was super impressed with. So I think I will definitely be coming back to that skirt pattern. Um, for the tab detail, I didn't have any buttons that I thought were big enough. And then I ended up just using some like self-covered button blanks. I thought the way that the metal looked with the, the fabric was really good. So I just did that and I didn't cover them with fabric at all. And I think it turned out perfectly. Uh, I made one alteration to this pattern. I did scoop out the back of the bodice. I like to say that was for a design reason, but I just didn't have any zippers long enough. So I had an orange zipper and I knew that if I scooped it out the back, then the zipper would work. So that's what I did. And I think it actually turned out really well. I like the way that the back scoop mimics the front scoop. Um, it's not super daringly low. Um, it's still pretty modest. I mean, I think it's pretty modest, but it's definitely something I would do again. I started at like a 14 on the top of the bodice and then I graded down to a 16 at the waist. And that's not something I've really ever done before, but I had read a lot of reviews that said that this dress was small in the waist and you know I didn't have a lot of time to do a fitting. Like I said, I only had a week, so I just graded it out and left it with that. Um, in retrospect, I don't think that I needed that extra um, circumference around the waist. But, you know, now if I wanted to eat, you know, an old whole Easter ham, I don't have to worry about my dress being too tight or constrictive. So because it's a little bit bigger around the waist, 
very comfortable to wear, easy to wear. One thing I don't particularly like about it though is that it hits above the natural waist. Um, and I, I lengthen it and it still hits above the natural waist, but if you look at the actual pattern pieces, it shows the waistline as being somewhere around where the skirt is. So it's meant to be a little bit high. Um, so I think if I were to make this again, I would probably lengthen the bodice just a little bit more to hit me a little bit lower. But I mean, that's a really tiny detail to squabble about personally. Um, so yeah, this is the dress that I made because I had a week. And the next dress I'm going to show you is what I wish I had made for the Easter spring so long. It is something that came to my mind after the fact. So this is the dress that I sort of uh, wish that I had made for the so long spring Easter so long. I didn't think about making this until after the fact. And then once I got it in my head, like I had to have this dress immediately. But it did take me quite some time just to get it the way I wanted. And I am absolutely thrilled with the results. Um, the bodice of this dress I made myself self drafted, though we did use a tutorial that is on Angela Clayton's um, YouTube channel. So I'll try to link that video down below. It has a really interesting detail in that it has two darts that emanate from the center of the bodice out, and then this entire thing is cut in one piece. So there's no like front and back bodice, it's all one piece. And then the arms are made just with bias cut um, fabric that you tie into this sweet, cute little bow. I just, I absolutely love how this dress turned out. <laughs> Um, I did some hand embroidery along the neckline. I used this Pinterest picture as my inspiration on the embroidery. I did um, sort of like a brown vine and then there's some purpley grapey berry things and some other flowers and some leaves. I learned how to do a herringbone stitch this time. That was my, my new um, learning for the embroidery and I just I think it turned out really really great and I can tell that I'm at, I'm starting to improve in my skill set on that uh, the skirt of this I used the box pleated circle skirt that is from Gertie's ultimate dress book I have used this skirt previously to make my blue um, taffeta gown and so I just wanted something that was really big and full. Uh, when I went to go cut this out, I had originally bought four yards of this white fabric. I did not have enough to make the skirt. So I ended up having to go back to the store and buy another two yards. But it's okay. It's a really cheap cotton fabric. Well, not cheap cotton fabric, but inexpensive fabric compared to like some of the other printed designs. And then the other little detail I put, I don't think it's going to be able to show up on the camera, but I'll try to get some pictures of it. Um, as I did hem stitching around the bottom of the, the skirt, I did a two and a half inch hem, which I've never done a hem that wide. And I don't think I ever will do a hem that wide on a circle skirt again, because it was an absolute nightmare trying to get all of the fullness out of that. But I think the hem looks really beautiful. If you're not familiar with hem stitching. So what it is, is I used a winged needle in my machine and then I just chose the honeycomb stitch pattern. So on my Bernina 350, that would be, I want to say it's stitch number 22. Anyway, the winged needle sort of like separates the fibers. You have to use a, like a natural fiber fabric, otherwise it'll recover and the point is you want to see those holes. So the winged needle sort of like separates the fibers of the fabrics and creates those delicate little like lace details. Um, and I just, it's used a lot in like heirloom sewing and I think it is so beautiful and I think it is a lovely finish to this skirt. The last thing that I made this month was this coat and that is using a Butterick pattern by Lizette. Now I have two coats that I want to make. Um, I have a big princess coat and then this one, and for some reason I thought this one would be the easier one to start with, probably just because it had less fabric in it. So it was less expensive and less scary if I messed up, but this is probably the more difficult coat to start with. Um, I used a wool fabric that I purchased from Fabric Mart. Uh, I think this one came in at around $12 a yard and bought three yards and I have almost a yard left over. So I probably could have gotten away with two yards of fabric because it's pretty wide. It's 100% wool. 
coating. Um, the inside I used just a cream Benberg rayon, um, which is a nice smooth, sinky, slinky hand. It's really lovely and it feels nice against the body. Um, when I got this coating in the mail, I thought that it seemed really, really thin to me. In Denver, we get not like a super rough winters, but it definitely dips into, you know, the zero degrees. So I decided that I was going to interline this coat. So I bought some flannel fabric. Um, so that was my new technique is I cut out all of the fabric pieces in the wool and then again in the flannel. Then I basted up the center and then trimmed all of the flannel to adjust return of cloth. And I used a tutorial on the Threads website. Be sure to check that down below to figure out how to adjust return of cloth. Then I sewed it all together. I catch stitched all of the seams to the inside. Um, catch stitch is a new stitch for me and it's something that I had never done before. I think I've also heard it called like a herringbone stitch or something like that. So normally I don't do a lot of hand stitching, but I thought on this coat to reduce some of the bulk in the seams, it would have been pretty important. So we did that along all of the seams in the coat. Then you um, make the shell and you put it all together. I'm a little bit disappointed because I went to go put in my buttons. I have these really large, nice wooden buttons, but I went to go put in button holes and my machine just won't do it. It won't go through all of that fabric. It's too thick, I guess. I mean, it goes through the fabric, but it's like the, the bobbin thread isn't picking up, so nothing is catching, and so there's no thread showing on the buttonhole. But honestly, I've been wearing it out and about now without buttons, and I still like it. I mean, I think it's better for like the more transitional time period, probably right now when, when it's a little bit colder, but it's still like 30s, 40s. Um, you don't really need to be like completely buttoned up and, and cozy. But so I don't think that I'll put buttons on it. I think I'll just leave it like this. So before I leave you, I just wanted to show you one other project I've been working on as well as some fabric I've purchased. So I started this hand embroidery after finishing a white dress. Uh, I, the idea was I could take this with me while I'm traveling on business next month. It'd be really easy to pack away in my suitcase and still be working on something. However, I think I'm going to have it finished uh, before I have my business trip, so I'll have to come up with something else to take with me. Tony has already requested that I make him a similar item, um, no flowers, but of a video game, probably like Mario or Luigi, so he can put that in his home office as well. And then for fabric, I picked up a couple of fabrics this month. Um, this is very similar to like a Michael Miller fabric I've seen, but it's just some birch trees with some birds on it. And this came from Joann's. I'm sorry, it's, it's very like wrinkly. They've all been washed, but they have not been pressed. Uh, the next one, this is just a geometric design, but it kind of reminded me of fish. Uh, I, get, I really love these turquoisey colors, and I think um, with this mustard accent is really, really pretty. Then I have this, which is a beautiful sort of like dark and stormy birds fabric. I'm probably going to be making a dress out of this this month. It just it resonates very well with me in these current April, May showers that we've been getting. So I kind of just want this for a rainy day. Last but not least, we have this, which is a beautiful light. Um, I want to say it's rayon pink fabric plaid. I think it's going to make a great um, sort of lightweight button up I can wear in the spring and the summer. So I'm planning on probably making this this month as well as a pair of light gray skinny jeans to go with it. Um, and I think that is everything. I hope everyone enjoyed my makes and I hope to see you back here soon. Take care.